Hey, what's up guys? I'm BTC. In this video, we're doing a countdown of the top five tips for improving aim in Overwatch. If you're new to Overwatch, or if you're having trouble climbing the competitive ladder, then this guide is for you. Now, before you start working on your aim, you absolutely must make sure that your sensitivity and video settings are set correctly. If they're not, then everything else you do is going to be a waste of time. I already went and made a video showing how to find your correct sensitivity in Overwatch. I'm going to put a link to that in the description, probably in the comment section. And there should also be something on screen right now that you can click on that will take you to that video. Again, if you don't have the correct sensitivity in video settings, then everything else you do is going to be a waste of time. So after you're done watching this video, go and check out the other one and make sure you get the correct sensitivity and video settings. Starting out at number five, hit scan versus projectile. So if you're new to first person shooters, you may have never heard of those things before. But the first thing that you need to know before you can improve your aim is understanding the difference between hit scan and projectile. In Overwatch, some characters use hit scan, some use projectile, and some use both. Now hit scan is when the enemy instantly takes damage when you click your attack button regardless of how far away they are. If they are in your crosshair and you press the attack button, they will take damage. Now with a projectile, it's a little different. There's an actual object in the game that gets fired from your character. This object, like Genji's shuriken, must travel all the way to the target and actually hit them in order to do damage. The enemy player can see the projectile coming towards them and move out of the way to avoid damage. That's something that they can't do versus a hitscan bullet because the hitscan is instant. In order to hit an enemy with hitscan, you simply put your crosshair on them and pull the trigger. For projectile, you have to anticipate where they're going to be and figure out how long it will take your projectile to get there. For example, Soldier 76's primary fire is hitscan and you can hit anyone from any distance instantly with his left click. However, his right click, the helix rocket, is a projectile, meaning the further away they are, the easier it is for them to dodge it. Now this might sound like hitscan is way too powerful, but there are some drawbacks. So let's go over it. Number four, understanding spread and damage fall off. So after hearing about how hitscan can instantly do damage to someone at any distance, some of you may be thinking it sounds way too strong. After all, if you can't dodge hitscan like you can a projectile, why would you ever want to use a projectile? In Overwatch, just like many other first-person shooters, hitscan weapons suffer from something called falloff. Damage falloff is what happens when your target moves further away from you. So although you can instantly hit them, you won't be doing as much damage at long distance. Damage falloff applies to almost all hit scan attacks in the game, with the exception of a scoped Anna or Widowmaker. Now, there is one projectile attack in the game that will also suffer from damage falloff, and that's Maze Right Click. Now, it's important to note that damage falloff does not affect all of the characters in the same way. Some characters will start losing damage really close, and others will start losing damage really far away. Also, the amount of damage that they lose is different for every character. I'm not going to go over all the different numbers and stats in this video, but if you want to learn more, I will put a link to a full video that I did demonstrating all of the different damage falloff, so you can go and check that out after you're done watching this one. The other thing you should understand is spread. There are two different kinds of spread. The first is with shotgun style characters like Reaper and Roadhog. Whenever you press the button to attack, instead of firing a single shot, there's a large amount of small pellets. And as these pellets get further away from you, they continue spreading out more and more. Targets that are up close get hit by a lot of pellets and targets that are far away will get hit by very few or none of the pellets. The other kind of spread is for characters like Soldier 76 and Bastion. With these characters, the first few bullets will be accurate, but the longer you hold down the attack button, the more spread out and the more inaccurate the bullets will become. 
It should be noted that some characters, like Tracer and Sombra, will always have spread on their bullets, regardless of if you fire one or many. Alright, so now that you know how the game will handle it when you press your attack button, it's time to start getting those attacks to land where you want them to. Number 3. Practicing in Custom Games Unfortunately, Overwatch doesn't really have an actual training range. The practice map is pretty bad with only large, slow-moving training bots that really don't do much. So what you can do is create your own practice range by using the custom game settings. So here's how you do it. What you're going to do is you're going to click play and then you're going to go to custom game. From there, click on settings and change the rule set to skirmish. Change the map order to single map. Scroll down a bit and select the map you want to use. Continue scrolling down towards near the end and change the health modifier to 300%. Change the ability cooldown modifier to 200%. Then change headshots only to on. Click save. Back at the custom game lobby, the next thing you want to do is click add AI. For the hero, you're going to pick Ana. Difficulty is going to be hard. The count will be 6. And then you want to put them all on team 2. Then click add. And now you're ready to start the match. Pick whatever character you want to use and join the game. You won't have to worry about any of the enemy Ana killing you since they can't actually land headshots with their gun. So spend the next 20 or 30 minutes trying to land headshots on the enemy team. Make sure you move around a lot, pop in and out of cover, and generally play as if it was a real match. If you just run up to targets and shoot them point blank, then you aren't actually improving your aim. Number two, practice using quick play. So training against bots will only get you so far. You're going to need to play against real people using a variety of characters in a lot of situations. It would be nice if there was an actual deathmatch mode that allow you to do this, but unfortunately it doesn't exist in Overwatch. Although, when Blizzard adds the new custom game server browser, people might start making their own. But until then, the best we have is quick play. Now yes, a lot of people use quick play as a method of warming up and practice, but they don't really use it properly. A lot of times players will go into quick play, but not actually focus on what they're doing. They're just going through the motions on autopilot. If you're using quick play to actually practice, then that's what you need to do. Pay close attention to your movement, positioning, and your aim. Prioritize your own gameplay above everything else. Remember, this is quick play. It doesn't really matter if your team wins or loses. And keeping that in mind, if your goal is to improve your aim and gameplay, it's okay to ignore the objective completely. Improving your aim is not something that's going to happen overnight. It will take a lot of practice and a lot of time. And that brings me to the next point. And the number one tip for improving your aim is to take regular breaks. This might seem like kind of a silly non-tip, but it's actually quite important. A lot of players will sit in front of their computer for hours and hours on end. That sort of thing isn't exactly the best when it comes to your health, but it's also not very good for your aim either. When you've been sitting in a chair staring at a screen for hours on end, you're going to get fatigued. Your eyes, neck, back, and arms. This means your vision isn't going to be as sharp as it should be, and your reflexes are going to be a little bit slower. A lot of players don't actually take into account how much fatigue will affect their accuracy and performance. If you want to play at your peak performance level, then your body needs to be rested and comfortable. At least once an hour, you should get up and walk around a little bit stretch and, I don't know, have a drink of water. If you want to take it one step further, you can actually search on YouTube for stretching exercises that were specifically designed for people who play video games. Also, understand that after you've been playing the game for six or seven hours, your aim and everything else is going to start to decline. So don't judge yourself by how good you do on your 15th game of the day. 
All right, guys, that is it for this one. I'm always uploading the latest in tips, guides, and Overwatch news, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, share it with your friends. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.